three. Okay, thank you. Okay, now guess let's get started on creating vitamin strategy. Can you see my screen, everyone? Okay, good. Okay, so let's talk about, um, so the trade station is going to be more on uh, creating pricing strategy for the product that uh, you guys are like uh, building for this week. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, different types of uh, pricing strategies, uh, which one should you use for which uh, scenario and so on and so on. So uh, if there are any questions, make sure to just uh, raise your hands and ask. Uh, so let's get started. So, uh, like price and pricing strategy is actually a, a, a very wide and a very big uh, topic, and it needs a lot of time uh, because it's very sensitive. It is and it's a lot of research, a lot of uh, trials, and so on. But here we hope to grasp at least uh, much more of the idea of which switch and uh, when we use which. Okay, good. So let's start with what it is. So what is uh, pricing strategy? So pricing strategy uh, is just a way uh, to determine the best price for the product or for your product or service or anything that uh, you are selling. Uh, it's just creating the best uh, price because you don't really, you don't want to like uh, overprice things because if you overprice it and it's a very competitive uh, market, you might lose uh, like customers uh, and the customers may move to another client or, like, or another uh, another person because it's cheap and you don't want to like uh, really decrease the price as well because if you really decrease it or much, you might risk um, getting uh, losing money and not making profits uh, and even sh sh shutting, you might need to shut down your business as a, as a whole. So uh, it's just de 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 determine the best, not to high, not too low. Of course, there are ways, there, there are pricing strategies that you set your price low and your price high. We will see them and in which, uh, we will see in which market is this or are these uh, pricings are preferred. So, pricing uh, is really sensitive because, uh, as, it, as I told you, like it drives revenue, influences uh, brand, uh, how people see your brands. Uh, it affects uh, market position. There are different market positions. It affects your position in the market. Uh, and it also aligns pricing with business. You, you also need uh, to align your pricing with your business goals and market conditions. So, if your like if your business goal or the goal of your business is to provide uh, like cheap or like cheaper material, and you you want it to uh, like price them high, it's not going to work. So, the main objectives of uh, pricing strategies include like to maximize your revenue, uh, to penetrate the market, uh, competitive link, uh, to gain your competitive uh, position or advancement, uh, to retain your customers and profit margins. So profit margins and actually revenue maximization are somehow or somewhat related, but yeah. Okay, so let's move to types of uh, Pricing strategies. So we have a lot of uh, types of pricing strategies. The first one is competitive. So if uh, if if it is like if the market or if the business is not new and it has a lot of uh, competitors, you might need to set your pricing at a competitive price. So which means you're gonna match your competitive pricing strategies. So pricing match. It's going to be uh, it's the same when your uh, like when your price is uh, at the same price or somewhere uh, somehow close to the, your competitors uh, your competitors price is going to be price it's going to be called price matching price undercut is when you set your uh, like when you set your price lower than the competitors price because you want to retain 
or we want to gate more uh, market share and attract more customers and price leadership is going to be you're going to be the first one to set uh, a higher price for the others to, to like follow so uh, if you are the first mark if you are the first company to just raise you the, the price of the product and you guys are, are going to follow it's going to be called uh, price leadership so the pros and the cons of this pricing strategies uh, so the pro include it's really simple to implement uh, it's really simple to implement and, and get a competitive edge and but the con is uh, can lead to price wars and reduce uh, profitability so you might get especially when you are uh, undercutting the price uh, just to get more customers and if the other companies also undercut the uh, their price to just retain their customers so you you you, you might get into price war and that could be uh, bad for continuity and the other is uh, the next pricing strategy is going to be penetration pricing strategy so as the name declares you want to penetrate into the market so you're going to be introducing a low price just to quickly gain market share uh, and attract more customers and build a higher or a good customer base so the process is going to be effective if for a new market entry so if your product is new but there are a lot of uh, like other companies that are already um, giving that service or selling that product you might need to uh, like use this penetration uh, pricing strategy in order to get uh, good share and but the call the the, the call uh, is going to be low in short profits the, the profits is going to be very low you you might even uh, lose some money at the beginning uh, and potential for price sensitivity so the price is going to be very sensitive because you don't have a lot of profit mar margin in your uh, sale uh, price so you're going to be very sensitive in, in that regard okay so the next one is sorry yeah value-based pricing so the value-based pricing is going to be when you set your price based on the perceived value of the customer so it's just uh focuses on the willingness of the, the customer how much are they willing to pay so these are much more uh, like related to high like uh, high-end material so for example, you can take a phone, uh, you can take some cars, like some luxurious cars. Um, you can take uh, uh, like brands, brands like uh, clothing brands, uh, and like, uh, like, yeah, these kinds of brands. So it's not that they, uh, like for, for, for instance, uh, if you take, uh, let, let's say a clothes, uh, let, let's say Louis Vuitton, is the manufacturing price and the price of uh, like sales and the price of everything is not as high as uh, the price that they are sell selling it at. But they are selling it at, uh, at, at such higher prices because they know that the customers, their customers are re willing to pay that much. So for instance, you know, like some shoes from Nike are actually uh, in thousands like uh, two thousand three thousand dollars so it's not that these shoes are like top of the line more, more like uh, like they use like very different material and uh they don't use very different like production process or anything but it's just the fact that they are uh the customers are willing to be yeah, so it just focuses on this, uh, like what the customer needs and uh, what are they uh, willing. So this is good because it will lead to higher margin, but it is not good because, but like the cons include uh, a required deep understanding of the customer's value perception. So I believe I believe the best the best example could be iPhone or Apple's. So Apple, like their selling strategy and their their, their understanding of uh, their, their customer and so on, I think I believe they, it, it keeps them at that level. But yeah, let's continue. So uh, the, the next one is cost plus pricing. So you just, you know what you want to make from each sale. So uh, if you know 
uh, like uh, like if you know, for for instance, let's say you made a, you have a product that you are going you're planning to sell, and if the product is going to cost you let, let's say a hundred dollars per unit, and you want to make uh, like forty dollars from each uh, unit, you will uh, just do like say what the cost is plus what the mark the markup is. So uh, here in this case, the price is going to be one hundred and forty dollars, right? So it's simple and straightforward for, for art, but it ignores uh, demand and competitive pricing. So if your competitors are like pricing it at a lower rate or at a lower price, it's going to hurt your company a lot. So before we move on to the next one, uh, are there any questions, guys? Uh, how is it going so far on your end? Yes, Tabitha. Okay, thank you, Kira. Um, I'm so sorry, I'm not hearing, hearing you, maybe. Uh, what about now? Oh, good. Uh, sorry. Okay, now I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so far it's it's good presentation. Uh, maybe just I'm thinking that you know here there are two types of uh, you know main points like uh, the supplier and the, the the customer. Here we are taking this training as a supplier, so I think for me. Uh, but when I see these pros and cons, pros are mainly focusing on the supplier side, and cons are just focusing for the customer side because. There are two curves, the supplier curve and the demand curve. So here, it is my understanding. If I'm, I'm not correct, I don't know. Maybe you will correct, correct us. So can we take this session as a supplier side or we are on the customer side generally? That's my question. Thank you. OK, uh, that's a good question, actually. Uh, so yeah, like you said, uh, in economics, there are sorry, I got uh, disconnected. So uh, what I was saying was, um, so in economics, there are two uh, curves. Uh, so uh, we have the supplier curve and we have the demand curve. So whenever these two meet. Uh, like the one you will take uh, the kind of like the graph is basically uh, quantity versus price uh, graph and whenever these two graphs or with these two lines uh, meet uh, that that's going to be your price and uh, that's going, going to be your quantity so that's a very very simplified version of uh, economics actually um so when you dive deeper uh like when you dive deeper and deeper, so this curve actually changes a lot for depending on the market, depending on your customers, and depending on your product. Okay. Uh, so basically, what we are studying is for you. So by you, we mean so you are developing a new pro uh, like product, uh, and we don't know about the product, so that's why we are listing the products. So you are developing the product in. Like you have finished like most of the product, uh, like the uh, like the things that you need to do. You know, to de de develop the product. You have to develop the personal, or like what the user, what the typical user is going to be. You have to develop the part the like the journey, like how they are going to use it. Uh, you have developed the product. What is going to do? Which market is going to? Fill in uh, which market gap is it going to co consider and so on, and of course uh, you have also now like, you need to set the price. So we are looking from the uh, supplier side, which is you. So you need to choose uh, base dog, but the supplier is nothing without its uh, its uh, customers, right? So you need to understand the customers, you need to understand the market in order to set the price. So the pricing strategy is yours to choose, uh, but it depends on both the market and on uh, the, the user. So like I said, like I have said, when you develop your persona, you're gonna select like you're gonna understand your user, right? So 
uh, like is the right product for like the rich, uh, like, uh, like uh, high end people and so on and so on. And who is going to use my product and how I, are they going to use it and so on and so on. Right. So when you select or when you create that persona or when you create that person, uh, you, you actually know uh, what kind of person or what kind of users you can have. Right. So that's one input. And when you do your market research, you're going to understand what kind of market or what kind of industry is there currently and what what kind of pricing strategy are they following. You can just take uh, like two or three examples from your research and you can compare the price actually. And then, so you have these two like uh, data, right? So you, have, you know your user. Is your user like premium? Uh, like high-end people, or are you trying to save them money? So, uh, yeah, I don't want to go like too deep. Like, I, like, uh, is it clear so, so far? But uh, let me make, make sure that. Okay, yeah. So you may you may have like similar products uh, for the same problem. That's from different users, you know, from different suppliers, right? So, uh, when you come to like, like, like the basic example, when you come to Ethiopia or in Addis Ababa, uh, like there are a lot of like at least four or five uh, companies that uh, like that mimic Uber, right? So we have Ride, we have Ferris, we have a lot of uh, car, car companies, right? That's that gives this uh, like service. So when you look, look at these companies and look, look at the pricing strategies, so uh, we have Ride, which is like more of a premium. Uh, they are changing, uh, charging more than the others. And we have, I don't know the name, but uh, there are some companies that charge way, way more at least. So when you look, look at when they, when they entered, uh, like Ride Interch, Ride was one of the first one to to start this company, this uh, industry, and the last one uh, that I mentioned, I forgot its name, but it's joined late, right? It's, it, it just joined like months ago, so it needs to penetrate the market. So that's why they are setting such a low price in order to uh, like get some customers. So these are like the examples of what we are trying to discuss in our example. So. Uh, so you need to understand the market. So they understood the market. So in the market, like more customers are using white or more customers are using Ferris. So they need to penetrate the market and get a good, uh, good amount of users. So they just declare their, like, their, like um, decrease their price in order to get more customers. But when you look at right, they are setting like more of a premium uh, version of uh, this Uber, so they are pricing higher. Plus, they have a good amount of uh, the good amount of users, so they're just doing that. So that's just one example of what we are trying to discuss here. Is that clear, Tara? Or did I uh, not make, make make it clear? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 clear. It's clear. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yes, Casa. Okay, thank you for your presentation and the uh, explanation the what the therapist asked. Maybe mine is, uh, as a researcher, how about as a researcher, we are researcher and we are just uh, assessing the pricing. So which uh, pricing strategies that we are going to use or what are the factors to decide this one I have to use, this one I have to use, like that one. What could be the factors that we are going to use? Which pricing strategy? And what is the each maybe if there is limitations of each strategies? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So for the, the limitation, let, let me just start from the end. For the limitation, like you have seen, like uh, the cons, like I have, I am pre presenting the like the pros and the cons of each strategy. So you can see the what what is the limitation and what's good about the pricing strategy from there. And for what pricing strategy to choose? So that's your, uh, that's up to you. So that's your work. So I'm just introducing which, like each pricing strategies for you to choose from, and then you will choose from. So for, so for the factors that are going to affect your 
choice of pricing strategies, like I have said, you need to understand your user. So where while you, you are building your user persona, you already know what kind of user you have, right? And when you are doing your market research, you know about the market and you know about the competition. So if your product is new for the market, so you will use more of a, like, let's see. I think it's good to see here. So for the competitive pricing, so if you have, if the market is full of competitors, it's if it is full of like, a, uh, like, if they are as a com competitors, you might need to choose the competitive pricing. But if if it is uh, like if it is full of competition, but if you are trying to penetrate and get more customers within low time, within low uh, time amount of time, you might use penetration pricing, right? So if you are uh, like if like this is more for the premium or if you have a good customer base and a good understanding of the customer's value perception, you might use the value-based pricing that's here. You are building a new like product, but so this might not really be ideal. Plus the cost plus pricing is just your cost plus the price. So in order to choose this, you need to understand your product more and your users. So what are the implied, uh, what are the, uh, planning to pay for or how, how much are they planning to pay for it and so on and so on plus what is the market demand and then you can choose the pricing strategy that you want so you might you you will need the factors that are going to affect your decision are uh, like the customers your user persona plus the, the market thank you it's clear okay any other questions, guys? I like the discussion. Okay. I believe that's, uh, we can move on to the next one. So uh, let's talk about dynamic pricing and scheming pricing. So dynamic pricing is just a way for you to draw, adjust your pricing with real time based uh, market demand so here like uh, you can like these are more relevant for uh, places like uh, airline tickets event tickets and so on and so airline tickets if you see airline ticketing price uh, like pricing strategy it changes with time very very often so yeah, like you you might check it now and uh, the price is let's say like uh, 200 dollars and if you come back like uh, five or six like uh, six, six hours later it might be like uh, 250 dollars and so on and so on so that's called dynamic pricing so they just depend on the market demand and change their pricing so if there is more demand they are going to raise it if there is less demand they are going to decrease it so that the demand is going to be high so this definitely maximizes revenue but it may cause customer dissatisfaction and uh, it, it might be seen as uh, like unfair so like uh, earlier enough, uh, like i have said uh, if you wanted to book a plenty ticket and you see the price and you just go back and come back again and the ticket might be more right so that's going to be that's that's definitely going to create dissatisfaction uh, but it's going to maximize the price, like the revenue of the company. And then we have the skimming price. So this is just uh, initially when the, you enter the market, you will set a higher price initially, and then gradually lower it uh, uh, to match the competitors or to match the, uh, the market. So this, the goal of this is to maximize the revenue uh, from early adapters. So uh, like whenever there is like uh, early adapters. Uh, like, okay, this is another concept, but when you go to marketing and of course, uh, entrepreneurship and economics, there are, I believe like uh, four or five types of users. So there are the early adapters, the adapters, 
and then uh, we go to like uh, at the last there are like the ones who try things after everyone has used them so if you look at styles so there are people who just buys the new thing that can, comes up right? so, so for phones you you, you can see like long lines uh, at the announcement right so when iphone 16, 16 is out they want to be the first ones to buy it and hold it in their hands and like uh, do things about it uh, to reduce our things and like a lot of things and there are people who want to you to buy it after they re hear all the reviews ask people and so on and so on. so here is talking about uh, i just wanted to uh, highlight earlier that so is this the market like your uh, what do you say the target yeah the, your target is early adopters so the others are not, are not going to buy it because it's new but early adopters are going to buy it so that's why you want to set it high or uh, like at the beginning just to get more uh, recovery or cost or uh, like uh, more profit from the early adopters and lower it so that others will buy it as well so here the pros include uh, recovery cost quickly because you're going to be having a high profit at the start and capitalize on early adapters, but it can attract competitors. So it, it will definitely attract competitions because when I say high price, I mean really high prices. So, so if there is a market that has uh, customers that are willing to buy or to pay that much price for a product, there will get definitely be uh, competition. So it will limit your initial market penetration. So if there is uh, more competitors, it will limit your penetration. So the next two are premium and economics, economy pricing. So these are different, uh, like uh, different sides of the coin. So premium is just setting high, a very high price to reflect high quality and exclusivity, like being exclusive and so on. So we have talked about uh, this is more or less similar to the value pricing. Uh, but here it's just premium pricing is just uh, just to show the quality or exclusive. So if you go to some or like hotels or sell something, uh, they will bring the same. Let, let, let's talk like, for, for example, if you drink uh, coffee or like uh, some macchiato and something from a place that is well known uh, or that's exclusive, you might you might pay like 10 to 20 times more than the regular place. So that's just to show exclusive, like the, uh, it's being exclusive and so on. So here the pros is uh, high margin, a very, very high mar margin and it enhances uh, brand perception so uh, like uh, not all you users can afford your product it's just more of a value like a premium feel to your product so we have talked about uh, brands right so, uh, cl closing brands uh, like you can see them like who wears them are like really rich people and so on so it's just have that uh, brand perception so yeah and the cons, of course, is limit customer base uh, because not a lot of people, there are not a lot of people who are willing to pay like 3000 for a watch or uh, 3000 for a shoe and so on. So you have really, really small market share that's a really, really high margin. So uh, it's often good, but you need to have uh, like that's you, you need to create that brand perception in your customers. And the uh, next one is economy pricing. So here it's just the opposite of premium pricing is just to uh, lower your price with minimal marketing uh, and attract more customers. So for example, uh, drink store brands, uh, so they don't market a lot. So there is no marketing cost uh, in that sense, but they use that marketing cost in order to uh, reduce the cost and sell it at a lower price. So it try it, it attracts you know, price sensitive customers, but the margin is very low, and uh, the differentiation between you and your competitors is very very low. 
Yeah, okay. Before we move to the next ones, uh, how is it going so far? Is it clear? Yeah, I have CASA, and what about the rest? Okay. That's good. If there are no questions, we think we can move to the next uh, pricing strategy. So we have psychological pricing and vendor pricing. So for psychological pricing, it's just uh, like influencing the customer's perception. So instead of saying ten dollars, like you may see, like a lot of, in a lot of places, especially in the uh, like east, no sorry, west, you will see like uh, point nine nine. Like like ninety nine cents. So this ninety nine cents is going to create some psychological effect on the buyer that is more more cheaper than ten dollars. Even though the like the difference is not even a dime. Right? Like it's just for one cent, but it creates that psychological uh, psychological change in the, in the, in the customer. So. Uh, like if you say uh, like a thousand dollars or nine ninety nine point ninety nine, uh, right? So that's going to be that's going to sound a lot cheaper, and it's going to seem a lot cheaper than it is uh, for the customer. So that's psychological pricing. So it's increases sales through perceived value, even though there is no real value added. It's called uh, like it's have this thing called perceived value. So. It's not created. It's created by the customer. It's not the regulator, but uh, it can be seen as manipulation. So, but uh, if it works, that's good. And for bundle pricing, if you have uh, like, if you are selling multiple products to together at a lower combined cost, so uh, meal combos. If you see like, if you uh, like more than meal combo, uh, I think. What's a good example? So yeah, for instance, I believe most of you use uh, Microsoft Office, right? So if you are, if you want to use Microsoft Office, the premium version, you have two options. So the first one is uh, to buy the premium version, the key for the premium versions for each, uh, like uh, each, let's say, product. For example, you, you can buy uh, like a premium version for Word, or you can buy a premium version for PowerPoint, uh, like uh, Excel, and so individually. So we have the price. Let's I'm not uh, like really sure about the price, but let's assume that the price is, uh, for example, uh, one dollar, uh, ten dollars per product, right? Per ten dollars per uh, product, which means ten dollars for Word, uh, ten dollars for um, Excel and so. On. But if you plan to, so there is an option that's going to say if you want to buy all of it, you can have it for thirty dollars. So that's called bundle pricing. So if uh, you will lower the price if you buy the whole thing rather than if you buy it individually. So if you want to uh, buy, so that's going to make you think, okay, like uh, if the difference is this low, why don't I just buy the whole thing and you will buy it? So that's called bundle pricing. So it increases the perceived value and encourages a higher spending. So you might just want, you you might just go to the website uh, wanting to buy only where this uh, index is, but when you see the price, oh, okay, uh, it seems cheaper and reasonable, so you would buy it. So it's going to encourage you to spend higher and the cons include, of course, may reduce individual product ma margin. So if people are buying more and more and more of vendor pricing, they will uh, not buy the individual product. So uh, I think just uh, three more. So uh, like the, the, the next one is uh, geographical pricing. So it's just to adjust the price based on the location and the local economy condition. So uh, different pricing uh, for urban, rural areas, and for countries, and even for, um, yeah, even for uh, continents. So it just reflects the local market condition, and that it's much more complex in pricing strategy. So one example that I have on top of my head is, uh, like, if you want to buy, if you want to buy, uh, 
like it's, it's Spotify premium. If you buy it from Ethiopia, it's uh, only $20. Uh, you know, I think $5 if you buy it from Ethiopia. But if you buy it from Britain, it's uh, last time I checked it around 10 euros. So that's more than double, right? So this is called ge geographical pricing because people in UK can afford uh, like the, like paying 10 euros for premium subscription, but uh, Ethiopian are more or less uh, we willing to pay five dollars per month for the premium subscription. So these are called uh, geographical pricing, and we have the premium pricing. So you will offer the products with many li li limited limitations and uh, you will give it uh, gives a product for free that you will have a premium feature as well that's going to open up a lot of things for the free the premium users for example i believe the perfect example because you are work working with ai currently in the projects if you see uh, gpt for example i think it's a good example so if you want to uh, like giant image if you want to uh, do the analysis if you want to choose the models and so on you will need to have a premium account but more or less uh, it's free uh, to use so you have a free tier and you have the premium tier so it, are, it attracts large user base and uh, there is a high potential in absolute so uh, like it's not a sure thing but it will open up the potentials more so uh, but the cons is more uh, the monetization depends on converting the free users into paid. So you need to convince the users that the pre the premium they should get the premium uh, product because it's very very better than uh, the one that they are using, which is the free version. And of course, we have the promotional pricing and the subscription. Before we move move to that, let me check on. You guys, is everything clear? Is everything going good? It's, it's more uh, theoretical, so that that's why I, I wanted to check on you guys more often. Okay, so the promotional pricing is just uh, to promote your product. You will reduce the price uh, temporarily. So this could be uh, sales, coupons, and so on, just to increase your shoulder tab sales. So here. Uh, like especially on holidays, uh, New Year, and so on, you will see sales like forty percent, twenty percent discount or on their products just to have, just to attract that uh, like, uh, customers and to just increase their uh, value or their their base, like their customer base. So it will definitely increase your uh, short-term sales, but it will reduce your perceived value if it is overused. So if you offer uh, these premium, no, so, sorry, these coupons or sales, more of them, people are going to think, oh, okay. So they are not offering us. So they are having problems with their, their products. So that, that, that's why they are offering us a discount. So it may, it may build that perception in the customer's mind. And of course, we have the subscription pricing, uh, so charging the customer a recurring fee uh, for continued access of their product. So we have, uh, like as we have discussed earlier, uh, like ChatGPT is one example for this. So you will have to uh, pay monthly, and, uh, and, uh, man, man, like every month, to get this uh, to get their uh, premium buy. So it will uh, like it's more or less a predictable uh, revenue stream. So if they have, if as long as they don't cancel their uh, as long as they don't cancel their subscription, they will pay you monthly. So you will know that every month they are going to pay. So it's predictable, but it requires continuous value de uh, like value delivery to the as a uh, subscriber. So there's definitely competition. So you need to like uh, build your value uh, every time just to make them stay so again like since you are using like ai like you can see cloud or anthropic and open ai or chatgpt and cloud uh, how they are competing and how they are trying to 
and we're working to just keep their customers by uh, co continuously adding value. Okay, let's move to the next one. Uh, high, low pricing and healthy pricing. I think that's the last pricing study uh, we are going to see. So uh, the high, low, high discounts. So this one is different from uh, the, sorry, uh, the, the dynamic one. No, so, sorry, the skimming pricing, which sets a higher price initially and then gradually lower, lowers it. So they are loading it in like intentionally. So uh, they're not going to sh show you. Uh, for, for instance, for the skimming, I think this, they make them right, create some confusion. Da, 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 uh, that's why I explained them. So for the skimming pricing, they like, for example, uh, the initial price could be $100. So, they are going to be de 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 decreasing it continuously uh, just down to a point. Uh, for, for example, each month they might decrease their price by five dollars just to attract more customers and so on. But when you set a high low pricing, so you're gonna be selling like the value that the customer is going to see is a hundred dollars, but you will show them like the discount or sales uh, or sorry, you will show them uh, that you are on sale, or you will be uh, uh, you will tell tell them that you are clearing the the store and so on. So you will be de decreasing it to a point. So if it is uh, like if you want to sell your product by fifty dollars, you will give the price of a hundred dollars, and you will uh, like we are on sale. You write on we are on sale. 50% off and you will save on $50. So it's really uh, it's really uh, not a good thing to do because it's not uh, honesty, but uh, it will work. So like I said, it's different from skimming. So high, like, high, low, uh, high low pricing is just setting, you intentionally set the price high and you will be lowering it through promotions and discounts. So you have a discount, like uh, if you go to uh, like uh, Amazon or Alibaba or those kinds of online stores, so they will show you a higher price and they will show that uh, we are on sale and we have this much percent off, so you will get the product for this price. So the, that's what they are doing, doing right there. So they are not really decreasing the price, they are just selling at the price that, that they want to sell at, but they are going to show you a higher price and tell you that they have uh, they have decreased the price. So the last one is crafty pricing. So you will say it a lower. So th this is uh, much more uh, like you will see the printer. Uh, I think yeah, oh, we have example for it. So you will set a lower price for the main product, but a higher price for the complementary product. So you if you see at the printer. So the printer is not that much expensive. So you will buy the printer, but you need a cartridge, right? So the cartridge is going to be expensive and you have to really buy it every time you use it. So they are going to be many from the cartridge a lot more. A lot more than they are going to make, uh, make many from the printer because you have to always buy the cartridge, right? Or the ink. So it attracts customers with low initial cost. So, okay, like if you see a printer for a hundred dollars, oh, okay, the, that's cheap, so I want to buy it, so you will buy it, but uh, you do you not realize the amount of cost of the cartridges. So it's not as expensive as uh, like the printer, but the amount or the build up is going to be a lot more uh, money or it's going to cost you a lot more than the printer. But uh, like the cost is going to be potential customer dissatisfaction with overly high accessory cost. So as I told you, this time you will have to pay more than uh, what you have paid for the main uh, product, which is the printer. Okay, before we move on to the last points, is everything clear? How is everything uh, like everyone doing? Are there any questions? Yes, Tarak. Yeah, thank you, Kirod. 
maybe for the last uh, price strategies, uh, can we take those uh, pros and cons as a merit and a demerit? Like in cons, most of the time it's expressing the limitation of the pricing strategy for each of uh, the points which have already raised. Uh, so can we take them as merits and demerits? More, or like yeah. Of course, for every pricing strategy, you will consider them as meriting, like demerit, not like uh, because when we talk about the cons and the cons, we are talking about what's good about that pricing strategy and what's uh, bad about that pricing strategy. So you will you can take them as uh, meriting, demerit. Yeah, exactly. Good question. Okay, if there are no further questions, let's talk about the steps you need to follow or you like uh, the steps to follow to develop a pricing strategy. So the, the first and the most thing is conducting a market research. You need to understand your customer need and what they are willing to pay, to pay for, for it. So this is both persona, the user persona, you will get this information from the, uh, the user persona. And you will need to analyze the cost. So we have two kinds of costs: uh, fixed and variable costs. So the fixed the fixed cost is uh, a reoccurring, that's like a constant cost. For instance, uh, rent is called is uh, considered a fixed cost. The amount of uh, like salary that you need to pay is considered a fixed cost, and so on. So it, it it's not going to matter, or it's not going to uh, vary with the amount of uh, sales you make or the amount of product you sell, right? So if you if you sell a hundred products or a ten thousand products, you will pay this amount uh, regardless. And the variable costs, it's just uh, which are going to vary vary with the amount of product you produce or the amount of service you give. For instance, uh, the cost of material that you are going to be using for producing the, that product for instance if you need uh, to produce one product like if you want like for example i think a good example could be if you need to produce one material what is what do you need for instance uh, if you are thinking about building a bicycle shop or uh, like a bicycle uh, making company, each unit is going to come with uh, cost of material, right? So you have the steel, you have the coloring, and so on and so on. So these costs are going to be depending on the number of products you produce or the number of product sales that you have. And uh, break-even analysis is just uh, so you have these co costs, right? So you have these costs, you have your price, so uh where does they meet or where does uh, profit is equal to zero it's simply uh, break even analysis is profit is equal to zero plus uh, uh loss is equal to zero so you are not going to lose you are not going to make profit but you are going to survive right so you need to know your break even analysis just to understand how much sales you need to make right so if you need to make uh, X amount of sales just to break even, so you need to at least, at least plan for that much in order for the company to survive. And of course, assess the competitions. You need to assess your competitor, uh, your competitor's uh, pricing and positioning. And then you can select uh, your pricing strategy and then you can uh, test it and implement it, of course, for this pro project, you're not going to do these things. Uh, and then you are going to monitor your progress and adjust that. Uh, of course, you're, you're going to be deciding only doing up to four because you're not going to be testing it, but you are going to be implementing it. Okay. And then uh, factors that are going to influence your pricing strategy you have cost structure, you have market demand, you have competitors. You have customer segmentations, brand positioning, economic conditioning, regulations, and common pitfalls to avoid. Uh, you need to ignore, you don't need to ignore the market research. You need to do a lot of uh, market research. You don't, you, you really need to be aware of your costs. Undermining your costs could uh, really hurt your company. And 
for uh, failing to differentiate if you are uh, fail to differentiate your product or your service from other competitors, uh, you might not meet or you might not get uh, new customers because if they feel you're not good, different from the others, why would they, they come to you? And inconsistent pricing is very bad because the customer is not going to be satisfied uh, with continuously changing prices. And lastly, lack of flexibility. So you need to be flexible according to the economic uh, like situation and other situations as well, but you need to be aware of them. Yeah, we have, I have uh, actually, actually I've published a couple of uh, articles that you can go through and to understand pricing strategies more. Uh, but yeah, that's it from my side. So if you have any questions, the floor is yours. Or is everything clear? Uh, can we get some confirmations in that regard that we can end the session? Yes, Alison. Uh, good, 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 mo good morning, all. Thank good you for the morning. wonderful presentation. Uh, oh. uh, thank you very much. Uh, I just I wonder, the, is, is there no technical challenge for this uh, week 11? And the, the career challenge I was going through it, I uh, I, I don't understand uh, most of the uh, assignment there. So I don't know. Maybe you can just. Uh, what What do you mean? Like there, there is no technical challenge. You didn't receive the link. Yeah, I, I've not seen I've not seen the technical challenge uh, link, and uh, the I only saw the career challenge. Okay. Okay. In that case, uh, have you checked Slack? Uh, I think. Okay. I'll, uh, so, yes. I, 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 I will. I will go back to Slack again. But the the career challenge, the most of the most of the instruction on the career challenge seems not to be clear to me. Oh. Okay. I think there there is a session tomorrow on the career introduction. So I don't okay. believe the career challenge has been introduced yet. Uh, let me okay. check, but if there is any co confusion on that regard, yeah, it will be introduced today, like right after this session. Okay, okay. Then, yeah. the, 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 then I'm, I'm still awaiting the record for the yesterday, um, yesterday session. I think it has been uploaded. Oh, yes. I'll check. Thank you. Yes, yes. Both his sessions has been uploaded, and this one also. Right. Even the morning standup has been uploaded. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. I'll check. Uh, Rudolf. Yeah, I hear Rod. Uh, I think you have answered his question. I just wanted to mention that we uh, yesterday uh, there is a introduction to to the challenge and uh, the recording is there you can find the recording in the recording session as well for the for the challenge document it's already in the slack so in the channel week 11 12 you can find that so this is what i wanted to say thank you uh, yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Kirot. Maybe this is a very important lesson for us, especially for those who have a plan to, you know, attend the accounting and finance or economics class for the future. It's very important. So if you would like to, you know, immediately upload or share this uh, slides at the end of this session, I think it would be good even for you know, the others who want us to have more insight on this part, I think it will be good. So please share to us immediately. Thank you, over to you. Yeah, yeah it's being shared as uh, right now. Yeah, it will be shared. Good, uh, good discussion, guys. Uh, if there are no more further questions, I think we can have a session here. Thank you guys for joining. And yeah, have a great day, guys.